Uh, I will declare a quorum and call the meeting to order. First thing we'd like to do, uh, item number one, is, is of course declare a quorum. Item number two is uh, allow our chaplain, uh, uh, Dave, to uh, pray over us, please. Thank you, Judge, gentlemen, and ladies. I trust everybody about the weekend. This has kind of been a Monday for me. It just doesn't feel, it feels differently. I just want to remind y'all that there are people that pray for you, including myself, all week long. This is not just a one-time event where you come and pray. Uh, it's important uh, to people in the community that you be prayed over, and that uh, we seek God's wisdom and guidance and unity for y'all. So know uh, that you're being prayed for and prayed over. Let's do that now. Father, we just come to you, Lord, in Jesus' name, Father, and I thank you for all county employees. Father, especially this governing body, Lord God. Father, I pray that you give them wisdom. And you'd give them knowledge, Lord, as they go about the business of conducting the business of Brown County, Lord. Father, we ask you to bless their families. We ask you to bless their employees, their road crews. And Father, we pray that you protect them. We pray for our law enforcement community, Lord God, that they be blessed and protected. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you, and cause his face to shine upon you, and give you faith. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Thank you Dave. Yes, sir. All right, item number three is citizens' comments. I do have, uh, is it Mickey? Am I reading that right? Yes. Okay, Mickey, uh, you can either speak now or you can speak. I assume you probably want to speak to item number, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, the one Mr. Worley sponsored here, 7B. A 7B, is that correct? Yeah. You want to wait and speak yeah. to it then so you get to be heard right before the vote? Yeah, yeah just, just so everybody knows, by the way, uh, Senate Bill 2840 took effect last fall, uh, and that changes the way uh, we all public meetings are conducted. Uh, Fortunately, the commissioner's court was, uh, these gentlemen before I ever even took court, uh, a seat on the court were ahead of the curve, and they were already doing in practice what is now his law. And basically what that states is, is that now any citizen can speak directly to an item immediately before uh, a vote is taken. Uh, you don't have to speak solely and completely up in the citizens' comment section. Again, that was Senate Bill 2840 signed by Governor, uh, Governor Abbott. It went into effect last September 1st. Uh, it's kind of a short bill. But it does uh, does change some uh, some things up a little bit, and and I'm a huge proponent of it because it gives you a chance to be heard, not just at the beginning of a meeting, several agenda items before uh, something you're speaking about is heard. You get to actually speak right before the vote is taken, uh, so uh, if you so choose. So that's what I'm asking now. I assume, uh, Mickey, that you'd like to wait and speak. Yes. Okay, no problem. And I have another one. Uh, uh, forgive me. Who just handed me this? Who is it? Is it the same one? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. So that'll be 7B, and I'll remind you again whenever it comes up. Okay? Is it on parking also? Uh, yes. Yes, here's on parking also. All right, so we'll go on to item number. Since nobody wants to speak on citizens' comments now, I'm assuming I have the two and you all want to speak. I just want to clarify that. All right, so we'll come back to that. So item number four, consideration approval of minutes from uh, 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 February is it 3rd and 10th, 2020. I make a motion we approve both sets of minutes from the February 3rd and February 10th. Hey, we have, have, a, have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? And like, if, if you and the public had a comment about the motions, uh, the minutes that they're about to adopt, this is when you'd be able to speak now under the new Senate bill. But if there's no other comments, then I'll call for a vote. All in favor? It passes unanimously. Sharon? Yes. I abstain on the 10th because I was not here. Sure. I would do uh, vote to affirm the third and I assume the judge he wasn't here on the third either he was here on the tenth Correct. he would probably need to abstain on the third I just I just want it known that I wasn't here and I am abstaining okay. all right, sure. all right. Uh, item number seven uh, is I'm sorry where are we item number six consideration approval payment of any bills is needed I saw some floating around
moment of silence as well the commissioners look over the bills. So. Do you want to make a motion? <laughs> you look over everybody seen them? Happy? You might make a motion to pay the bills for the All right, we have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. You with us, sure? Yes. All right, just make sure. Kind of quiet over there. Uh, so, uh, any further discussion? All in favor? All right, so we will pay the bills this month. That's always handy, isn't it? All right, item number seven, and that is our consent agenda. Item number seven A is a uh, uh, item that I put on here. Consider possible approval uh, to procure stop the bleed kits for each uh, floor of the courthouse. As you know, there's, an, there's another new Senate bill went into effect last fall for public schools and private schools, I believe, also. Uh, they have to have a stop the bleed kit uh, on each floor of the school. And basically, what a stop, are you all familiar with that? What a stop the bleed kit is, it's a real simple. It really doesn't require any training. It's you open the bag and follow the instructions. But the health department has offered to about $55, $60 a kit uh, for the basic kit. And the health department has offered to offer them to this to us for free and offered to uh, provide training to any county employee that would like to have the one hour, probably less than one hour class on how to use it. Heaven forbid a child fall down the stairs or somebody split their head open or, or somebody cut a finger or something where you have significant bleeding and you need to stop it. Anyway. Uh, I've talked to Cliff, and there'd be no uh, no uh, cost to the county. Uh, they would provide them. It's just I, I wanted to uh, avoid any uh, appearances where I wasn't involving the court when the when the offer was made. I'd like to see. I think it'd be beneficial to have one of those on each floor. One court. kit per floor. One kit per floor. So we'd have three floors. We wouldn't have one in the basement. I think I also on that same subject our ambulance company they keep those in case of mass casualty they have what they call a throw kit. Yeah, yeah, that's a big bag. Yeah, that they carry with them. Yeah. And some of those. These would be in a little cabinet mounted to the wall with a big red cross on it, and it's just for immediate uh, aid to someone until the paramedics get there. That's all it is is to, to stop uh, massive trauma. Heaven forbid we ever have any kind of intrusive trauma in the courthouse and someone is hurt. Uh, We'd have it right. We'd have a trauma kit right there on the wall, a stop the bleed kit to, to, that uh, is so elementary and it's in its use that anyone ought to be able to rip it open and follow instructions and use it. Anyway, they're free. Uh, you need a motion on those? Uh, I would say I would, probably since it's a donation and they are a separate entity. I make a motion we accept the stop the bleed kits from the health department. Okay. Do we have, uh, I'll second it. Stop. I think it's good. Again, doesn't cost us anything. Uh, I was a little concerned about the steel cabinets that they mount to the wall that you put them in, but I don't think those, I think those come with it. Yeah. They don't cost us anything either. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I think it'd be a good thing all the way around. Can't, I can't hurt. All right. All in favor? All right. Motion passes. All right. Item number 7B is uh, Commissioner Worley, uh, discussion of possible action regarding parking signs on uh, South Broadway. And of course, Commissioner, the floor is yours and you can go first or you can let the the citizens who signed up to speak speak first. <coughs> okay, um, I don't mind you, stating it. Would you like to since no, speak into your fine. item? You know him? Uh, I, I know him. Okay. <laughs> um, what we, what uh, I guess I have heard from most of the business owners on on uh, Center Avenue and South Broadway <coughs> and uh, about parking issues around the courthouse and around their businesses mainly on jury duty days that's the big problem when when there's a uh, huge influx of people coming to uh, uh, I guess jury duty for district court or county court at law and they have they're having to interview those people for a jury and uh, they're parking parking out here in front of the courthouse because it's one convenient nobody wants to walk a half a mile even me and uh, and they're leaving you know they're they're leaving their vehicles there all day well um, on Fisk Street that would be fine or on North Broadway that's fine because there there are no businesses on North Broadway facing the courthouse they're empty buildings um, the county owns two parking lots one directly north of the courthouse which is for employees and uh, one directly east of the courthouse 
across Fisk, Fisk Street, which is for overflow. My idea, and and don't get me wrong, it, we could we could talk about you know anything, but what I was thinking was we erect signs on South Broadway on the courthouse lawn on South Broadway and Center Street, limiting parking to one or two hours. So if somebody has business in the courthouse, you know, normally they can get it done in an hour. But if we two hour if it, we need to go to two hours, then that's fine too. But what it would do would limit someone from parking and leaving their vehicle there all day. And that's what, what these business owners are, are talking about is uh, they, there's no place for their clients to come in and park. Now, we can't do anything about the far side or the west side of center because that's city property. And we can't do anything about the south side of Broadway because that is city parking. But we could, I believe, erect signs on the courthouse lawn on South Broadway and Center to maybe, I'm not saying it would alleviate, but maybe it would help. Now, if uh, I'd like to hear from, from uh, I was get Mickey Stanley, I think you were the first. I'm, uh, I don't know, Lou Ann may be the one to talk. Well, people want to tell me what to say. I printed up a few things here. Okay, Mickey, like before, I, you, before you get in, state your full name and your address. Mickey Stanley. You, you don't have to say your address. You, what town you live in? Brownwood, Texas. Okay. All right, good deal. I'm with Brownwood Insurance Center. I'm on the corner. That's for the record, so we got you We got you on Thank the record. Uh, I, mean, I didn't print it up these because I misconstrued how many of you guys there were. We can no. share. On the... Uh, our issue is getting people in and out of. There's a microphone right there, Mickey. Our issue is getting people in and out of our business. Right. On the court days, that's tough. It's even tough to get our employees parking. And uh, the sign situation may may be an ideal. Uh, when I heard this was coming up, I did uh, a little preliminary stuff in on the packets that I handed out. If you will look at the back photo back there, the back two photos, you'll see what it looks like from my office looking out into the parking in front of my building. There's also two pictures there of me doing this between the cars. Yeah. Those parking spots are 12 feet wide, 11 or 12 feet wide. So quality is great on parking. We have a lot of room. Quantity is at a problem. My thought is, if you look on those front pages where I've, where I've measured out the uh, with Google, it uh, sometimes Google gets a little off on their measurements, but that's pretty close. On our side of the street over there, there's 16 parking spots. Uh, if if those were just narrowed down, if you took a couple of feet off of each side so that you've only got four feet or three feet on each side. All of a sudden, by the time you get to the end, you freed up a couple of three more parking spots. If you did that all the way around, there's one, two, three, four, five, six parking spots, parking areas that, that, that park at an angle. To the, if you did that all the way around, that's freeing up another 15 or 20 parking spots. I like having the wide parking spots, but it's just not feasible when you get out of your car and I can stand there and do that with my six foot arms and I can't touch a car on either side. You know, so uh, that might be a consideration on the days that we're courts on in, in usually Mondays or Thursdays. Sometimes it still gets a little tricky, but it's not near the problem it is on Monday and Thursday. So if it's quantity of parking that we're looking for, we could do without a little quality. I mean, we can get a little closer and I don't, want people to be banging their doors up on such but six foot's a lot of a lot of space and uh did you have anything else you want to say i would uh, entertain where the employees of our businesses where we could park down here 
to free up some more. I mean, I know that there are several occasions where there are some county employees that are parking on that side all day long. Mm -hmm. And like you said, if there, you know, there was a one to two hour sign up there, maybe that would alleviate that and open that up. But our businesses over there, we don't, I mean, we have four employees total at our business. And I'm not sure how many others down the road, probably a total of 15 to 20 employees. You know, that's taking up the whole parking right there. If, if there was any solution to where maybe we could, we could park as business owners and employees, I don't know. <laughs> well, there um, there really is no place to put a, another parking lot down here because all the buildings are, are around. And the only, there's some... Uh, there's some very limited parking in the alleys behind y'all's business, but it's it's very tight. I've I've uh, been back there years ago, uh, but uh, and the same way with uh, behind, I guess uh, Tommy Adams building over there, by there. but it's very limited. And uh, if if a trash truck was going up and down through there, they couldn't make it usually but anyway like I said there's um, and you're talking about over here on your side of uh, center that would have to be brought up to the city because that is city the city parking on on our side it's a little bit different it is still controlled by the city but we can put up signs I believe I'm going to have to check with the city about that, but uh, we we do have some signs up that are are uh, I guess directing people to the handicap parking, which is the northwest corner back here. Okay. And like I said, there's there uh, there are no businesses on North Broadway. That's not to say there won't be. I think there's one gentleman is trying to. Uh, do something in the old uh, Yamaha building on the corner. I don't know what he's what he's wanting to do, but anyway, we do hear you. We do know it's a problem, and uh, we I think we will do whatever we can to help alleviate it. Now we can I can go to the city and ask them to re restripe that down Center Avenue. And around the courthouse to make it not a 12-foot parking parking lane, make it a 10-foot, because most cars are eight foot wide. But um, I mean, we can't. We could ask for that. We appreciate anything that you can. Yeah, and we don't mind doing that. But I just wanted um, wanted y'all to know. I wanted to hear from you first. Yes. And uh, wanted y'all to know that. It, you're not, your uh, your voices are not falling on deaf ears. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. I like that. I've been hearing the same thing from CPA over there on that same side myself. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the right. fellow who Van, ran I believe you're next. All right. Good morning. I'm Van Stewart. I live in Maine, Texas, but I own the office building at 311 North Center, which is on the corner of mm -hmm. North Broadway and Center. Inside that building, I have 13 offices that I ran out. On the driving here to, today, I was thinking about it. There's 21 of us every morning in that building looking for places to park. Three of those are service businesses, accountants, and attorneys that have people coming in all day looking for parking. So that's just one block right there, one little business. So I visited with the commissioner, was it almost two years ago, and said Probably. we have a parking issue. Yeah. Happenstance is that I ran into... Beverly with the Brown County Museum and I, we realized we have the same issue. I have talked to Ray at the city at a meeting and we realized he understands. So we have kind of put together a loosely formed little business group here. It sounds like I have two more I need to add to that one. And we are trying to come up with some ideas that we would like to present. We're at four phases and I believe those meetings are ongoing and occurring today with you, I believe. And so I applaud you for looking at the parking issue and realizing it's there is one, but I hesitate to say 
that's the solution. And no, I, I agree with you. And so I guess I'm asking if you would give us a little time to get our four phases together and meet with, I think they're meeting with you this week or meet with commissioners and yeah, with I wanted the to meet city. with me after court, that's all I know. And sure. meet with the city and let's see what we can work on together. Their idea was great. I don't think we've come up with that one. But county employee parking is an issue. And even though there's not, there is two businesses on North Broadway, if you count Enterprise coming out onto North Broadway and the museums. In yeah, and that's not directly in front of the courthouse. Correct. That's, I agree that you can't do anything with that. But if you uh, put two our the, here. The uh, jail museum is county property. Correct. I don't know. We, that could fall into it also. And I but Enterprise is not. So. And well, there's I believe the museum has some ideas they wanted to share with y'all. I haven't been able to put it on the agenda yet. I, I think I sent out an email a while back to see if there was any interest. There is that little strip building that is adjacent to our county parking lot that is about to fall down. And the city a, a manager voiced an interest that they might, if we wanted to take, buy that and tear it down, they might be able to go in halves with us just to get it off the courthouse square. That might give us, but in reality, that's maybe 10 more parking spaces. That's not going to solve the problem permanent but we're just very I, I use it as an example of how limited we are as to I, I agree 100 percent I mean I and I think we all realize more parking is not just going to magically appear but I think through some unique planning such as the smaller parking spaces I'm not sure we had thought of that and a couple of other ideas we had that we would like to present soon that we might could gain a few more for us and if you wheel in there in a four-door pickup with big mirrors, those park those parking lots they don't help. look as big as they do that little yeah. car. But I'm just saying. But most of the people will get. Well, I don't know. That's another. That's another question. Agreed. Yeah. So again, thank you for looking at at it. I'm glad that you, we all realize we're all on the same page. But what? I guess I'm asking if we don't jump up with the two-hour parking right now until we can all meet and discuss some options. It's on the radar uh, uh, and since it's Gary's initiative I think it's a fantastic idea. Would you like to get cost analysis on the signs? Well I don't uh, uh, I don't mind y'all coming up with some with your plans and us holding off on it for a while. I don't I think that's prudent. I think we need to include the other business <coughs> yes. here today and let's talk to yeah, you know, And I never did get in touch with Todd Steele. He's over there. And, and I don't know me. the the uh, uh, exercise plates across the That's a vacant building now. It's vacant yes, now. We've been trying to make some contact. Okay, and, and I think there's another lawyer or two over there Correct. that I, did, I didn't get in touch with. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've been approached by Jane, but that's in your, your that's, building. That's in my group, yes. Yeah. And uh, we Check. have some ideas. We're, I think we're ready to, after visiting with you this week, maybe ready to present in the near future to the court. Sure. Okay. That, I think that would be great. Okay. I'd be very much in Thank support of at least the, two, the minimum two-hour parking yes. maximum. I think that would be at least the, the smallest band-aid we could put on it. So. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you bet. Have you all talked to the city on this also? Yes, sir. We have met with Ray, and he is he is in the group, yes. Okay. Ray Chipton? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so item number seven. There's no action on item number seven. Uh, <laughs> B, so we're going to 7C, which is Joe Kelvin's consideration of the uh, action on the burn ban. Well, we got some moisture coming again right now. We had, I think they had a little fire out in early. Just to, but I'm, I'm still good personally in my part of the county, leaving it off. I'm good. I'm good. I think it's fine staying off. Okay. All right, so no action on the burn ban. Item number 7D is our sheriff. Uh, consideration of possible approval of employee changes. You don't, look like, you don't look like the sheriff, but you'll do. Put on an ugly mask. <laughs> Chief Deputy Stroop, good morning. How are you, sir? So we've got a couple of employee changes that are going to take place in the jail. Uh, one of them's going to be a Maury Nunez. is going to be hired, uh, well, started uh, February 14th at $2,666.67 a month. 32000 annually, replacing a Robert Wallace who went to road crew. Uh, and then we have a Janet Roberts who we're going to be starting on uh, March the 2nd for the same $2,666.67 for 32000 annually. Uh, she will be replacing a Mickey Byford who uh, left us on 12-18 of 19, making the same amount, so there'll be no money changes there. And 
I move we approve the two employee changes in the sheriff's office. Second. A motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Right. Motion carries. All right. And then, uh, Chief, there's also a presentation of the jail report. Yes, sir. Looks like we have 168 inmates this morning, uh, 132 males locally, 36 females, 11 total out of county, 9 males, and 2 females. So those uh, 11 are the ones that are bringing in the money. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. All right, I'm item number uh, 7F is in Frank. Uh, Chris, are you out there? Come on up. Speak about the uh, volunteer fire department. Take a seat there where we can hear Put you on the hot microphone. Everybody can hear you. All right, this is item number 7, F as in Frank, and the chief would like to present a presentation on any prescribed uh, burn at the National Guard Armory the week of February 24th through the 28th of 2020. Yes, sir. Or is yours, sir? I don't have enough handouts for everybody, so got one to share. They're supposed to give me 12 maps, they only give me five. So I didn't check. Uh, usually we have our Central Texas Survival Land Fire Academy this time of year, but we're not having it this year, but we're still going to do the prescribed burn. It will be approximately 3,800 acres. If you look on the map, part of it will be off of 45. That's the back side of the uh, headquarters of Camp Bowie. We'll bring the burn from there around to, I think that's the last gate on 45 Camp Bowie's property. Uh, they have a training area in here that's called an IED road, which is an improvised exposure device road, and they train on that road. And they don't want a lot of brush and stuff in there. They want to get you got to see a good We usually try to burn that out every two or three years, plus it gives us a break on 45. We have a lot of homes and, and property and some ranch houses over here. That gives us a break if we burn that out. I mean, if we do get a big fire in there, then we don't have a big fire that runs right up on the road into those houses. The other side is the county road. 264. Uh, 264, thank you. <laughs> but it, it starts right along here is where they're uh, 30 millimeter grenade range. Yeah. If you ever drove this by there, you see the old goose and a half sitting out there. When well, we start right there, we're going to bring it around through Devil's Gorge and back up to the corner where Elkin Cemetery is and bring it back around there. I don't think this side's going to burn real good because of the rain we've had, because we all know that that slopes down from the, the dump ground there. So we probably won't get a real good burn on this side. This side over here, where it comes past Devil's Wars and comes back around, that's all on the side of the hill. So we'll have pretty good drainage there. So I believe we can get a good burn right there. And the, the reason we burn all of that is we have an agreement with the Texas or the National Guard. If they allow us to train out there, then we burn for them and keep the stuff cleaned up. Uh, when we first started, they have two disease out there drop zones. When they're really training really heavy out there, they fly all their ammunition in, they parachute it in. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever rolled up a parachute in a drop zone full of grass burrs. It's <laughs> <laughs> kind of like loading hiding full of grass burrs. It's not a lot of fun. But we just wanted to give you all a heads up. The dates will be the 24th through the 29th. Uh, 24th will be move-in day. Uh, Forest Service will start bringing in their equipment. We'll have a task force from Brownwood. We'll have a task force from Murphy. A burn crews coming up from the Astros. Probably have between 35 to 40 people on the ground. We'll have my department out there. We'll probably have anywhere from 10 to 15 top six engines. We'll have two 3,000 gallon tenders, and then we'll have all the buoys equipment out there, dozens, motor graders. So it'll be well contained and well controlled. It's not. It's not a haphazard operation. It's like a military operation. Is there anything we can do to, to assist? Sir? Anything we can do to help? I, I'm sorry, I can't. Anything we can do to help you, to uh, assist? If you want to come out and visit, we'll be more than welcome. You know, uh, as far as equipment and uh, monetary-wise, no. we got it pretty well covered. 
But we do appreciate your offer. Yeah, you bet. It's, it stands. Right. And then we can do if something comes up. Let us All know. All right. Good. Thank you all. That require action. <clears throat> Chris, you do know this This is in my precinct, yes, sir. and right now we do not have a burn ban. If it were to be put back on before then, I would let you know, but we still cannot stop you from burning. No, sir. That's, no. One, of, that's one of the things that are in the law. Yes, sir. But yes. we do appreciate you coming to the court and informing us and thereby informing the public as to what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. So when they see all this smoke rising on the <laughs> end of February, they, they won't panic. They're, now, there will be some calls to dispatch oh, yeah. that are saying there's smoke, you know, smoke out here, but we're all going to know about it. That's right. When and we start to burn, it's usually, I don't know how it falls on me, I've just got to working with the Forest Service and got it real tied into them. But when we do do the burn, I usually get on the radio and I notify dispatch. Yeah. We do have a fire on the ground. And then I keep a radio constantly, either my personal, one of my personal handheld or the radio in the engine, I keep it on the dispatch channel just in case yeah. something starts blowing up and we got contact but, with it. Like I said, we now, do I appreciate you coming. year in about four or five years we hadn't had to ask for a burn permit. Right. <laughs> so the rain is good. Thank but you. We do appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. All right. We're on to our last item, item number 7G is in George, and that is our local attorney, Ronnie Lappy, would like to. He's a retired justice of the peace here, and he asked for permission to come and address the court uh, regarding uh, his retirement. And that's about the limit that I'm aware of. That. <coughs> Certainly, he has the right to come and address us, so here he is. Well, I, I, I've talked to somebody. I've talked to Joe about that. What I... Uh, I wanted to ask, I, uh, I know this is just a discussion, you can't vote or anything, but uh, I was uh, uh, Justice of Peace for 24 years, and now I've been a uh, retiree for 11 years, but the, uh, used to my retirement covered my insurance, but it, it, it doesn't anymore, my insurance is higher than that, but I know sometime last year y'all passed a regulation or something that Retirees after like maybe October last year forward could buy into the county's insurance for 200, 250 months. I don't know what it was, but it, that was your initiative. Yeah, it's, it was it, anybody with 25 years service. It was over 55 years old. But it started from then on, uh, from yeah. that point on. Mm -hmm. That's what I was just so cuts off of Social Security, doesn't it? I don't know about that. Yeah. I think, I think yes, it does. Yeah. They, uh, it cuts off uh, when uh, Medicare kicks in. I had, I didn't have 25 years, I had 24, but, but it was back in the past before that, and I was just wanting to see if y'all could consider, uh, I don't know how many people, I know uh, three or four that might affect, but uh, I wanted to see if y'all might consider uh, other retirees uh, buying into the county insurance that way. Uh, and do you know how many we have on the books? No, sir, I don't. I know, I talked to... Glenn Smith yesterday five, that five, used to be right. sheriff here, and he said he would be. In, he had to be in Dallas at a doctor's appointment. And I asked him to come, and he said that's one patient I know would be interested. in. Rhonda Durkoff, that used to be my court clerk, those are some I know that are uh, not able. To, they're not drawing Social Security or anything. They're not able to do that. But I just wanted to see if y'all would look into that, and I wanted to see if y'all would uh, look into when you did. Uh, raises for the employees, the raises for the retirees too. It's, uh, it's never gone up ever since it started. It's been the same thing, and it uh, maybe it's not possible. I don't know, but I would just uh, <coughs> ask if y'all could look into those things. And so well, we couldn't. Yeah, maybe, know. maybe Ann, maybe you could let us know at the next meeting how many actual would, would qualify for something like that. I really have no idea. How, how would we? How, I'm looking at you in your HR role. How would we determine? Exactly how many there are that have been here 25 years and lay on that are retired? Uh, I could call TCDRS and find out. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. But if they're if they're drawing their retirement, I don't know what the original intent was. Go back and catch people up. There's the ones that were currently employed and currently on our insurance that were retirement age. And, yeah, that's what it was. And it's been kind of with our intent from that three, point forward. Three people so, thought it three? had the qualifications. At that time. So basically, what you'd like to do is you would like to be able to purchase, not get paid anything more, but purchase that use your retirement to purchase insurance that yes. the other employees get. Yes, well, that would be helpful. That would be possible. Yes. Yeah. 
Mine was 24 years. I didn't have 25 years. But I don't see why we can't at least look into it. You weren't 55 years old at the time either, were you? We're not retired. Yeah. I was hoping um, you'd get up top here. I had enough time <laughs> to have the age plus the, the equal 70. The age and the time equal 70. I probably wasn't 55 at the time yeah. I retired. Uh, you were 51. 51 when I retired. With 24 so. years, so that doesn't meet either of the requirements. Oh, okay. And it was not in effect at the time you were here. So according to TAC, Right. Yeah, that's qualified. We okay. check into all that with TAC before we did it. I mean, now, what was the other item you were talking about, the retiree employment? I mean, the. I, the, the I, I don't know if there's possible. I just wonder if there's a way that when you uh, uh, get raises to employees, you raise the uh, retirees too. But no, yeah. there's not. There's not a way to do that? Okay. That's not right. without. Because uh, it's been the same thing. Revamping the whole program and costing more than. Uh, we could bear. Okay. Uh, that's just what the other thing I was going to ask, too. Uh, I guess they didn't answer that. That's like they're doing in California. Right. Yeah. Well, I would still like to know what it would cost to, to the individual, for an individual with uh, that close to be able to purchase. I mean, except the commissioner's court probably wouldn't be able to do anything about it, but I, I, I'm going to at least inquire because I'm interested. Right now, my interest is over a thousand dollars a month. It doesn't hurt anything to look at it. If I could find yeah. something else, that would be helpful. Right, right. Okay. Thank you. You bet. I got the effect of court. You're talking about <laughs> taking a, something that's not an employee, putting them back on the insurance? Well, I just want to see what it would cost per month if they've been here that long. I think it's all way. First thing, they've got to be here 25 years. Yeah, 24 years. Yes, and Rhonda Burkhardt, I know off the top of my head, was not here 25 years ago. Uh, Lynn Smith, I, he didn't meet the age requirement. And as Blue Cross told me, as TAC told me, this was not in effect right. when they retired. It's not retroactive. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, we, we did like I mean, we could, two we, deputies, I think. I don't think there was more than two or three people that... I remember when you adopted it. I remember what the intent was, and I thought it was a very good intent. I, uh, But, yeah, we were thinking like a handful maximum. Yeah, so you have got half and five years. Are. Well, that's the last item on, item on our agenda, so if anyone doesn't have any other, anything else, then I'll declare us adjourned. When do we need to meet again, fellas?